Hey, what's up? I'm Reinhard Kate, and welcome to episode 19 of The Drop. We've got a very XRP-focused episode. We've got David Schwartzlaw to talk about the XRP ledger. Brianne Madigan's gonna talk about liquidity in digital assets. And last but not least, we've got the co-founder and CEO of BRD Wallet, Aaron Boisin. Stay tuned for The Drop. David, give me some context on the XRP ledger, uh, where it started and where we are today. Well, I started working on what we now call the XRP ledger at the end of 2011. So I've been at this for what eight, nine years now. It kind of feels like forever. But the changes have been drastic. I mean, in the early days, all we had was the ability to perform a transaction on a decentralized ledger in just a couple of seconds. And then we started to realize that the properties of the algorithms that we developed allowed us to do things like a decentralized exchange. And then we had this idea of allowing people to issue assets and ideas like community credit. And we put all that together into a functional system probably in mid-2012. Why is robustness so important today with so many payment providers and financial networks that are depending on the XRP ledger? You have to realize that you're talking about billions of dollars in a system that doesn't have an administrator. There's nobody that you can go to if it messes up. And so reliability is the number one property. And it means that these systems are very slow to develop and evolve. In the early days, um, before I was working on the XRP ledger and I was looking at Bitcoin, and we sort of had this idea that if there was any new feature, Bitcoin would just adopt it. We now know that that's hopelessly naive because any change to a system like this imposes costs on everybody who uses the system. With any other piece of software, a company will release a new version of the software, say Oracle releases a new version, and they'll say to people who have like mission critical deployments, don't upgrade to the new version. Just use the current version, give us a little bit of time, test it, whatever. You can't really do that on a public blockchain. If the rules change, people have to run software with the new rules. If you want to ask why these systems don't move more quickly, why they don't add features on a regular basis, um, that's why. You've suggested changes for the XRP ledger. Uh, can you give us an overview of what those changes are and what they might mean for the network? I've suggested a bunch of changes that fall into several different categories. Um, one of those categories is like core consensus improvements. One of the things that I've said a lot is that proof of work is kind of a technological dead end. It, it works fine. I'm not saying it doesn't work. I'm just saying that there hasn't been any significant innovation in it. There are also uh, changes that are in the form of new features. One of the features that I think is, is very exciting is a feature that would allow people to launch um, well, stable coins are the obvious use case, but it's not just stable coins. It's essentially assets pegged to some external value. Features similar to that exist on other systems, but the interesting thing about this is that the liquidity is guaranteed by the ledger mechanics. Why is liquidity important for market stability and health then? I think even to take a step back, liquidity has a lot of components that are important to kind of address. So one of which is um, immediacy. So I think about that as how quickly can I get access to markets and how quickly can I trade into and out of this asset or token uh, for another asset. I think about the breadth of the market. So breadth is sort of how you think about um, the trading volumes at different prices in the order book um, and then depth of the market. And depth of the market is really about how many orders there are close to exactly where the, where the price is currently trading of varying sizes, which would imply that you could get a lot of volume through without having much price movement as you're trading into and out of the asset. And then in addition, um, accessibility is very important. So accessibility is just probably as it intuitively sounds, the ability to access markets to trade in those assets very easily. Um, and that can be geographically or through multiple infrastructure partners, whether it's exchanges or OTC desks or what have you. And the last key uh, attribute of a healthy liquid market is really resilience. And that is getting at the ability for a market to recover from a significant systemic event. So if there was some sort of a market shock, the ability for order books to get back to normality and tighten back to similar prices to where they were prior to that event relatively quickly. Um, and so all of those attributes are very important to um, a, healthy, a healthy liquid market. How does deeper liquidity impact services like on-demand liquidity or ODL? That's a great question. So as you think about the value that we're providing sending flow from the U.S. to Mexico. Because we're able to use XRP as the bridge currency between the U.S. and Mexico and do basically instantaneous transactions, um, we are significantly reducing the cost base, sending that money cross-border. And the view that we're delivering and focused on enterprises is true, enterprise solutions to help them perform their business more efficiently. But as we do that, we're really giving them the opportunity to pass on the 
fee savings through leveraging our technology and infrastructure to their everyday consumers. So, you know, somebody living in America who is working and sending money back to their family in Mexico, um, we're really thrilled that the work that we're doing is really driving value to the bottom line and to everyday consumers. Aaron, tell me about BRD Wallet. How does the technology you guys employ make mainstream adoption of digital assets more real? It's just a, an app for mobile devices, uh, Android and iOS. The intention of it is just to make cryptocurrency really simple and safe and easy and convenient to use. What differentiates BRD Wallet from other wallets that are out there? Our uh, Bitcoin wallet connects directly to the uh, Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network. So even if all our servers go away or get seized or, or our company shuts down or whatever, you still have access to all your money. Uh, what's Blockset and why is it important for developers in the space? So in supporting lots of different uh, cryptocurrencies for our consumer wallet, we had to build out a, a back-end kind of enterprise grade service for peer-to-peer -peer networks. Since it runs on mobile devices, uh, there needs to be a, a lightweight kind of mobile oriented protocol. Our goal is to eventually get there hopefully with uh, all the blockchains for um, things like a Ethereum, the, the lightweight mobile protocol is not quite ready uh, yet, so uh, we're doing that uh, through a system that we call server-assisted syncing, uh, using our Blockset backend to do that. There's a lightweight protocol for Bitcoin and Bitcoin Cash and other uh, Bitcoin-like services uh, that uh, is called uh, SPV, Simplified Payment Verification, and that's what we're using to connect directly to the uh, Bitcoin peer-to-peer -peer network, and hopefully we can get there with uh, all the blockchains eventually as they, uh, as the protocols mature. Being a longtime Bitcoin guy, yeah. uh, you guys are now adding XRP to your wallet. Uh, what? How does that add value uh, to the overall industry and uh, to people that use your wallet? As I mentioned, uh, you know, we started off using just Bitcoin, but then when uh, Bitcoin market dominance dropped below 50%, uh, we realized that we have to support what the market wants. And uh, XRP has always been right near the top of the list as far as market cap and the number of uh, customers and use cases for it and businesses that uh, have adopted it is growing all the time and uh, it's proven itself to be extremely valuable and something that the market wants and so that's why we're supporting it in uh, BRD. Thank you.